Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Cancer Campus, ooh, drug drones, bird flu, cow flu, human too? President Urkel, did I do that? <laughs> You're here with the Sigma Tiger. Thank you for coming back to all my uh, new subscribers. Welcome. Uh, this is the hottest, juiciest, beefiest news show online today. We've got a plethora of things to talk about. Cancer Campus, look out. All students on North Carolina University. There's over 150 students and staff that are diagnosed with a host of tumors and disease. As officials find lecture halls and classrooms teeming with toxic chemicals. And if you have attended, go ahead and... Uh, contact the school. More than 150 students, ta staff, and alumni have reportedly been diagnosed with cancers and other diseases linked to a university building teeming with toxins. Cases of lymphoma and thyroid and breast cancers have been reported among patients who spent time at Poe Hall, a class building at North Carolina State University in Raleigh. The building closed on uh, November 2023 amid reports of exposure to concerning levels of polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, toxic chemicals linked to cancer. Uh, they're all over the gaff, they're in the water, they're in the ground. Uh, apparently uh, eating certain foods can uh, cause this, like uh, if a bear is eating berries and berries are contaminated with B PCBs, then uh, yeah, it shouldn't be eating bear meat anyway, it's full of worms, I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyway, investigation the month before found that PCB levels in five rooms were more than 38 times the EPA's building limit. The university now faces lawsuits from uh, some of the 152 patients who report falling sick with diseases linked to the toxins. These include Sarah Glad, a 35-year-old mother of one who dreamed of using her degrees from New uh, from North Carolina State to run for office. A very noble and humble person, it seems. However, her dreams were cut short when she died from stage four breast cancer, which her family claims is linked to attending class at Poe Hall. Unbelievable. Can you imagine what a poor woman and family? We pray for her soul and the lives of her family. Unbelievable. All right, so here we go. Let's get some further information. Miss Glad attended NC State from 2007 to 2013, six years, earning a bachelor's and a master's degree. Her husband, Robbie Glad, told local news station WREL that his wife spent much of her master's program in Poe Hall. Years later, within months of each other, Miss Glad and former classmate were both diagnosed with breast, can breast cancer. Miss Glad was just 33 years old. Unbelievable. She was able to fulfill one dream and became a mother in August 2022, even as cancer ravaged her body. However, in January 2024, at age 35, she died from the disease. Now, Mr. Gladys focused on raising awareness. I don't care about money. I don't care about compensation. I do care about being able to help other people, he said. New uh, NC, I keep thinking New York, uh, NC State alum, not Christy Lewis, who attended the university in 2007-2012, said... Uh, that she started having night sweats while she was taking class in Poe Hall. I could not figure out what was happening, she told Fox News Digital. I was having to get up in the middle of the night and change clothes completely, and then I would fall asleep, and I had to put a towel down. That's why. Uh, <laughs> it honestly took me weeks to even tell my husband about them because I kept on forgetting about it because it was just in the middle of the night. Around 2011, 2012, she was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And there you have it. Months later, she discovered a lump on her neck, which turns out to be an angosarcoma, a tumor found in the inner walls of blood and lymph vessels. Though she initially thought it was just circumstance, she became suspicious after reading reports about a potential link between Poe Hall and cancer cases. Maybe my body isn't the problem. Maybe I was actually exposed to something that caused this. I don't know. It definitely shook me a little bit. Jennifer Walter, who attended the university from 2004 to 2007, was diagnosed with thyroid cancer in 2017, followed by synovial sarcoma, which mainly attacks tissues near large joints, like the knees, in 2022. There are such scary statistics that are tied with sarcoma. It's just a lot more real, she told Fox News Digital. They got it early, which I'm grateful for, but I fear it never goes away. It's something I'm going to have every day for the rest of my life. Building is closed. Yeah, there you have it. Old building. When was it erected? 
and what materials did they use? I'm sure uh, the campus has records of all that and they're more than aware. Uh, Mrs. Lewis said that she feels violated because she thought she was getting a good education in a safe place before suddenly being put in unsafe conditions. She also fears she may have passed on PCB exposure to her children. It made me feel just really nervous, she said. Poe Hall, which held education and psychology classes for 4,000 students, was constructed in 1971 when PCBs were commonly used in industrial products like oils, insulators, electrical appliances such as TV sets, lighting, and refrigerators. PCBs, including those used to build Poe Hall, were largely mass-produced by agriculture giant Monsanto until they were banned in 1979 amid concerns that they harmed humans and the environment. So what is Monsanto? Hmm? Well, they make seeds, genetically modified seeds, and then if they happen to spread onto another firm, uh, they'll go ahead and attack that farmer and say, now you must pay us money because you're using our seeds. Also, they create pesticides and insecticides. I believe that they, uh, DuPont may have something to do with Monsanto, and they invented Agent Orange uh, in the Vietnam War that literally killed everything that came in contact with it and caused cancers afterwards. Uh, so the agency uh, classifies these as probably probably carcinogenic. According to the CC, exposure to PCBs can lead to an increased enzymes linked to liver damage, skin lesions, and respiratory issues. Animal studies have shown effects such as weight loss, fatty liver, thyroid damage, and cancer. The investigation into Poe Hall began in 2023 when an employee issued a complaint with the Occupational Safe, Safety and Health Division of the North Carolina Department of Labor. The complaint alleged health and or safety hazards related to Poe Hall, according to the University's Updates page investigation. So, uh, yeah, they're investigating it. Uh, a federal investigation, uh, having a look into it. Um... The investigation was called off in January by uh, North Carolina State General Counsel, according to the CDC. Dr. Dallas Shee, an official for the CDC's National Institute for Occupational Self Safety and Health, wrote in a letter detailing the agency's inability to move forward. I explained that to the North Carolina State University's Office General Counsel has asked us to stop our evaluation. Well, why can't they move forward? And the requester expressed concerns over a lack of communication and general distrust in management's action. They also expressed concern about the lack of epidemiological analysis. So they're getting the old runaround because no one wants to take accountability for it, especially the current administration. Well, what they should do is look back and say, when did we find out this stuff was and why wasn't it looked at by that administration? Take the buck, wrap it up, pass it over to them, and then uh, resign when your pension comes in because that's likely what's to happen. And God pray for all of these people. Uh, Iran says Israel killed top Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps commanders in Syria. Boom, direct hit. Uh, Israeli airstrikes hit a building next to its consulate in Damascus, Syria, killing at least seven people, including two top-tier Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps commanders. Uh, Brigade General Mohammad Raza Zahedi was martyred as a result of the Zionist regime's air attack on the Iranian consulate building in Damascus. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps on Telegram uh, as translated, less than an hour later, the military force said the same strike also killed Brig General Hossein Amirulia, who was described as Zahadi's successor and head of the general staff of Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps in Syria and Lebanon. Additionally, Zahadi's close friend, Zadir Rahimi, was killed. The identities of the casualties are unclear. As well, they believe it's a targeted attack. Uh, Iran has come out and said that we let uh, Israel know that uh, we were driving. We even had a label on top of the car seeing that there's Iranian officials in here. So drones, uh, you know, as they're looking, they can read it and say, don't bomb this. And they were apparently in a, uh, a non-engagement zone. So we'll keep you posted on that. Meanwhile, in Juarez, Texas, troopers are firing pe sorry, pepper balls to break up bonsai charges through the fortifications at Gate 36. DPS has arrested and charged 221 illegals for rioting. Well, I hope they're ready uh, uh, for prosecution because the nine people that started a riot against the National Guard last time, the judge let them free because he said, you guys weren't prepared to go ahead with prosecuting these people, so we're just going to let them out on their own, uh, on their own, uh, whatever it's called, releasing them. So here is Juarez, Texas, a lot of razor wire set up, and apparently the migrants are bonsai charging it recklessly. Uh, Trying to get through, get that American dream, get the slice of the pie. Well, guess what? There's a little bit of pepper on that pie. Look out. 150 arrested for allegedly using drones to transport drugs, guns, and cell phones into Georgia prisons. Unbelievable. Well, not really. I mean, instead of using your body cavity, a drone flying over, dropping the uh, package seems a lot more legit. Months-long probe into an alleged drone-based contraband operation <clears throat> in Georgia's prisons has led to the arrest of 150 people, including eight corrections officers. Officials said, yeah, 
It's always an inside job. How do you think the drugs are getting in? It's always an inside job. Always, especially with prisons. Countries might be a little bit different, but likely uh, it's people uh, working the ports that are like, you know, wink, wink, send me a, a, an envelope of cash and I'll make sure a box 1670342A gets through untouched. The investigation dubbed Operation Skyhawk uncovered that drones were being used to move cell phones, drugs, and weapons into Georgia Department of Corrections facilities, according to the government's office. Obviously. And here is a, an image of what they found. Some Willy Wonka bars, perhaps laced with marijuana. Uh, we had some cell phones here. We got, geez, like pounds of marijuana, it looks like. I don't know what this other stuff is. Uh, perhaps some pills. Items seized during an investigation into contraband are seen in a photo released by the Georgia Department of Corrections. Search and arrest warrants were served at two locations in the metro Atlanta area on Thursday as part of the investigation effectively shutting down a sophisticated multi-state criminal enterprise that included civilians, inmates, and staff, the governor's office said in a press release. Among the 150 suspects arrested were eight Georgia Department and Correction employees who were immediately terminated. Yeah, I would imagine. No pension for you. The more than 1,000 total charges in the case stem from contraband introduction, drug trafficking, and felons in possession of firearms, the governor's office said. Many of those arrested may also face charges under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organization, the RICO Act. Interesting. Gang charges in what could be the largest gang RICO case in Georgia's history. Georgia will not tolerate those who put our communities at risk by trafficking drugs, weapons, and contraband both in and out of our correctional facilities. Absolutely. Yeah, lock them up. Put them in there with the rest of them. Items confiscated as part of the operation include 87 drones, 273 contraband cell phones, 22 weapons, as well as large amounts of tobacco, marijuana, methamphetamine, ecstasy, cocaine. There you have it. Boom. Grave medical errors. Accidents jumped by 36% in Quebec last year. If you don't know where Quebec is, it is the French part of Canada. Bonjour, Quebec. Every time I go to a hospital, I have to protect myself. It's like a war zone. A hospital is the worst place to go. I mean, I'm not opposed to that statement at all, to be honest, because that's where all the sick people are. But you'd expect to be able to receive uh, some level of care by a doctor or a nurse, some sort of health practitioner. Medical errors and accidents causing grave and permanent consequences to patients soared more than 36% in Quebec uh, in the year of 2021 to 2022 fiscal year. Well, what happened that year? It's like pandemic, you know what I mean? Right in the heart of it. Well, what was going on? Uh, by law, hospitals and clinics must declare medical incidents, which almost always involve errors, human errors, as well as accidents, but many don't always do. Still, the report identified a total of 442,726 so-called undesirable or adverse events in Quebec's public health system, up by 0.46% from the year before. So, it's not even uh, a big. It was 35% reported uh, previous. So, if you're in Quebec, watch out. Adverse events continued to have an impact on care and the delivery of health service during the pandemic. The 118-page report concluded falls involving patients and medication-related errors continue to be the most frequently reported events from one year to the next. This trend has been maintained over the past few years. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Anyone getting in and out of bed, walking to and from the bathroom. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, medication-related errors, that's not. Uh, check the chart. Uh, don't give him any methamphetamine-based drugs. Uh, similarly, data by age group of users revealed that more than half of all events involve those over age 75. Makes sense. In addition, we note that the increase in reporting of adverse events generating grave and permanent consequences is being closely monitored. The same applies to problems of abuse, harassment, or intimidation, which uh, is the big problem right here. Um, spiking grave medical incidents and accidents underscores the pressures Quebec's health system has been under during the pandemic amid a backlog of surgeries and shortage of nurses and other personnel. All across Canada. Not enough doctors, not enough uh, anesthesiolo anesthesiologists, good lord. And, um, of course, nurses. They say, oh, we don't have enough beds. They got the beds. The rooms are empty. There's not enough staff to take care of the people in those beds. So they can't put you there and leave you there. Uh, which is kind of what they did during uh, the pandemic. The response to uh, the pandemic left 4,000 dead in long-term care homes. If you don't know, uh, during the pandemic, uh, there was several seniors living arrangement homes that uh, were completely abandoned by staff. And the military had to come in. And they were just finding DBs all over the gaff. 
The bad news arrived by fax just before 11 p.m. It confirmed that a resident with flu-like symptoms at the St. Dorothea Nursing Home had tested positive for the novel coronavirus, the first confirmed case in the facility. By the next day, March 26, 2020, another eight residents showed similar symptoms. So there it goes. Start spreading. Despite the fact that COVID was spreading in that long-term care setting north of Montreal, the momentum of the health bureaucracy carried on. Another 11 people were admitted to St. Dorothy before the practice ended on March 30th, by which time there were 84 cases um, for those 11 people later died of the disease. So uh, basically the report goes on to say that during the seven weeks of hearing this spring, the inquest opened an unprecedented window into the havoc at six elder care homes and revealed how the misery at Heron, missing staff, multiple deaths and neglected residents left in squalor was far from unique. A series of mistakes and shortcomings uh, some resulting from years of underfinancing, others from recent misguided moves to prioritize hospitals, amplified each other in a disastrous chain of reaction, resulting in the death of more than 4,000 care home residents in Quebec alone. Worse, it appears some of them didn't succumb from COVID-19, but rather from the resulting chaos, starved and dehydrated or sedated with morphine rather than having a chance for recovery in hospitals, the inquest heard. And there you have it. Watch out, Quebec, because uh, your French healthcare provider may not care about you at all. A person in Texas caught bird flu after exposure to cows that were thought to be ill. Uh-oh. Is this it? Livestock and multiple dairy farms across the U.S. have tested positive for a bird flu, also known as uh, bird flu, sorry, also known as highly pathogenic avian influenza, or HPAI, in an outbreak that's likely to spread to at least five states. Look out. Uh, could be a milk shortage, people. Talking about inflation, milk prices going up. Well, the supply is obviously going to get wrecked here. Uh, Texas, Kansas, Michigan have been sickened by the virus and there were presumptive positive test results in New Mexico and Idaho. The first time the disease has been found in dairy cattle, according to American Veterinarian Medical Association. On Monday, the Texas Department of State Health Services announced that a person who is exposed to the dairy cattle presumed to be infected with bird flu has also caught the virus. So the second time a human in the U.S. has contracted HPAIA or H5N1. According to the Centers for Disease Control Prevention, a person in contact with infected poultry was sickened in Colorado in 2022, just recently. Okay, so heads up, people. Just going to keep you uh, informed about that. The new cases come just days after a group of young goats contracted bird flu on a Minnesota farm. Bird flu infects the respiratory and gastrointestinal tracts of birds and is often fatal to avian populations. It can spread from wild birds to commercial poultry and backyard flocks as well as terrestrial and marine mammals and humans. Government officials say the risk to the public amid the current outbreak remains low. Most past human infections have occurred after people had unprotected exposures to sick or dead infected poultry. But it's in the cows now. So we'll keep you posted on that developing uh, bird flu. Germany legalizes cannabis for personal use. Welcome to the club. Canada's already there and many U.S. states. Adults can legally grow and consume limited amounts and join members as clubs. Well, there you have it. Marijuana campaigners in Germany lit celebratory joints on Monday as the country liberalized rules on cannabis to allow possession of small amounts. The German Cannabis Association, which campaigned for the new law, staged a smoke-in at Berlin's landmark Bradenburg Gage, which the law took effect at midnight. Other public consumption events were scheduled throughout the country, including one in front of the Cologne Cathedral and others in Hamburg, Rosenberg, and Dortmund. The new law legalizes possession by adults of up to 25 grams of marijuana, just under an ounce, uh, for recreational purposes and allows individuals to grow up to three plants of their own. Federal legalization took effect Monday. If you're 18 or older, you'll be allowed to join nonprofit cannabis clubs with a maximum of 500 members each starting July 1st. Individuals will be allowed to buy up to 25 grams per day or a maximum 50 grams per month. I figure limited to 30 grams for people under the age of 21. Membership in multiple clubs won't be allowed. So I guess that's where you'll score your hooch. I didn't do that. President Urkel speaks up. Biden reportedly did not have any idea he issued Trans Day of Visibility Proclamation. Yeah, go ahead, log on to Twitter, or don't even log on, just type in POTUS, uh, at POTUS, or President Biden on Twitter, and just look through some of the posts. And you tell me if this old man is the guy posting this stuff. Is this an April Fool's Day joke? While Democrats have spent the better part of the last six months insisting that President Biden is a well-oiled galaxy brain behind closed doors, the POTUS clearly can't keep up with his Marxist handlers. Point in case, when asked about the proclaiming Easter Sunday Trans Day of Visibility, Biden flat out denied it. I didn't do that, Biden reportedly said when asked about the proclamation. Real Clear Politics' Philip Wegman reports. When asked about Speaker Johnson's claim that he had 
Biden replied, he's thoroughly uninformed. I didn't do that, Biden said when asked about proclaiming Easter Sunday trans day of visibility, asked about Speaker Johnson's claim, otherwise the president replied, he's thoroughly uninformed. Okay, so I just read the exact same thing, great. I didn't do that. Seems odd, you're not able to just look on Twitter X to see the truth. Of course, the biggest takeaway from this is obviously, who's running the show? Literal children planning Birmingham takeover. Illegal activity for spring break, Mayor Woodfin says. Literal children. Okay, okay, hang on. So, when you give children agency, okay, over their body and uh, their environment, you know, what do you think they're going to happen? They're going to become empowered, okay? They're going to think that uh, old Joe, old John... Miss uh, Rebecca over here, they don't have a clue about me. They don't get me. They don't understand me. They're just trying to keep me down. They're oppressors. They're suppressors. Well, guess what? Uh, when you give children agency, they're going to run wild. And that's why we never have. Okay? You leave a kid at home with a fridge full of uh, food and, you know, desserts and things. What do you think's going to happen? Same as if you leave a dog home with, like, a bag of food. He's going to eat it all and get sick. Because uh, they don't have uh, enough knowledge or experience to uh, make the right decision. And dogs are animals. And children are much like animals when they're young. The violence must end. And the responsibility begins at home. This is the message from Birmingham Mayor Randall Woodfin as he learned of a flyer being circulated among the city's youth. The flyer calls for the 2024 spring break takeover, March 30th and 31st. Woodfin urged citizens to pay attention to the flyer and react accordingly. A few days ago, I spoke about the dire need for parents to take an active role in protecting our children during spring break. But only then, not when they need to be infer affirmed, okay? Do not take any sort of role other than affirmation or you are violent and a bad parent, of course. This image is the reason why literal children were planning spring break meetups that would perpetuate illegal activity. Well, I mean, they can do whatever they want to their bodies. Why can't they consume things into their bodies? They're adults now. They can make adult decisions. Go ahead, get a job at 14. Go ahead, buy some ciggies and a bottle of whiskey, a little bit of Jack. Go have some fun at spring break, children, because you are uh, agents of your own body. The city is taking precautions, and the Birmingham Police Department uh, has been made aware of plans. Parents, I advise you not to drop off children on attended public places. He continued, your minor, 18 and under, must be accompanied by an adult or you will have to pick them up at family court where you'll receive a summons to be in court. So parents are totally responsible for the kids uh, breaking the law, but uh, nothing else. You do not tell your kids to do anything else. Just don't break the law. But you can do whatever you want other than that. It is imperative that mamas and daddies, big mamas, aunties and uncles, those caring adults who are closer to these children than any of us, take accountability for their whereabouts of the kids and how about their health and well-being uh, who live under their own roofs. So how contradictory is this? The clowns in power are virtue signaling so hard that uh, when it actually turns around, it's like the Democrats, like rah, rah, immigration, they're just coming in, they just want a piece of the pie. The pie's big enough and literally you got people like Moreno going around snot nosing and telling everyone to come and squat in houses. So Democrats, yay, immigration, immigrants show up, boo, immigrants. like. This is exactly it. And they'll turn around blaming on conservatives. Well, it was conservatives' fault that they didn't let them in originally, and that's why they're so unhappy. And same thing with this. Uh, we didn't allow the kids to uh, to uh, chop uh, off their body parts, so that's why they're revolting and trying to have a spring break of their own. Well, thank you for uh, joining me on today's episode. Quite intense. Let's go ahead and uh, like and subscribe. 10,000 subs or likes, and the mask comes off, and you can see... How beautiful I am. I wonder, what do what does he really look like? What is his hair like? Is he bald? I mean, we can tell my eyes. What about my teeth? Does it look like I've been chewing on firecrackers? Do I have a nice smile, a white smile? Am I hiding something? You tell me in the comments. What do you think I look like? Sigma Tiger, signing off.